All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is March 2nd, 2023. Oh, I hope you are ready. I hope you're going to take a deep breath. I'm going to do my best to 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 contain the excitement and joy that I have in the revelation that I received. Brothers and sisters, look at this. It's only been two days since the last video was posted. I posted this in the morning two days ago, so it's a little over two days, but it was actually from the live show that I did with uh, our brother Mike over at 165. Uh, we did it, I think it was, uh, what night was it? I guess it would be three days tonight. Tonight will equal three. But we wouldn't have been done yet. So see, I'm not even three days. Usually it's five days, right? At the very end of four, almost five days. But I couldn't wait. And the reason I couldn't wait is for anybody who has not yet seen this live show. Oh, too bad. <laughs> you might want to go watch it. I had realized Mike saw it from another angle uh, with the sun, moon, and stars and through a different piece of scripture. I came at it through another revelation. Again, all from Taurus. Taurus is the beginning. Taurus is the end. Taurus was the beginning of creation. Taurus at the end of creation. And Taurus is the beginning of every year in between. That's why there's been confusion trying to see it and try to understand it. So we talked about some of these things in the last, in the live show. Uh, we talked that I the, the reason I had used this as the thumbnail was the perfect thumbnail. Because for the first time ever, in, in all of these revelations, in all of this digging, in, in the revelation that's being revealed to us over the last five and a half years, I had never, there had never been a something I'd received from the Lord or understanding that, and what I say received, I mean just like suddenly understanding something, a revelation being dropped in my spirit. Not words, not thus saith the Lord, all right? But you guys know what I mean. It, it's happened so many times, and yes, this happened again in the shower, and it happened on the evening after this live show. It was so awesome. I came out, I was telling my wife, I was freaking out, and I was explaining it all to her. And right before, just as I was getting out of the shower, another one hit. But the other one wasn't so much a new revelation that, that, that proved what I was saying in the before, not after. The other piece was, was something we had already taught on. That's what we're going to cover first that something we had already taught on to 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 give understanding to how this time frame is going to play out because what had happened is in the live show when i was talking on these things it appeared there would maybe still be another 50 day pentecost count after the feast of weeks which we've taught on from leviticus but and so i didn't go into it in the live show because that was something that was sitting in the back of my head that I still needed clarity on it. it was when I was getting out of the shower, bam, it was brought to my thoughts that I'd already taught on it. And that's what we're going to, I'm going to show you guys that for anybody that had wondered watching the live show, um, what about then the 50 day Pentecost count that would follow in Taurus, right? If it's, if it's uh, the seven Sabbaths, then number 50 days. What about the numbering of 50 days, right? Oh, don't you worry. We've got the answer for that and so much more. And again, it's not something I mentioned in the live show, but I knew that there were those who have been watching, those who have been digging and, and diligent, who have been following this for a while, that probably had that question. Because if I did, I'm sure there were others of you that did as well. But that was the like the afterthought. That was to help me piece together something that I knew was still kind of make me say, well, well, it doesn't anymore. But the revelation I got while I was in the shower, that drop into my spirit that I suddenly understood what the connection was and that it went all the way back to in the beginning, I was freaking out. And I came out, man, it was like 1230 at night. My wife's half asleep. I'm telling her all about it. I'm taking the next half hour. I'm going through things and I'm explaining it to her. <laughs> and you know what? My wife looked at me half asleep and she said, you got it. <laughs> My wife doesn't say that, guys. She just looked at me and said, you got it. <clears throat> she's encouraging. She, she's never beating on me for this. She's always encouraging. She's learned all about scripture in the end times and the revelation through five and a half years 
of me receiving this revelation just dropped in my spirit reading and understanding and i start yammering on like two hours three hours a day in the beginning for like the first year and a bit it was craziness and she's been soaking it in and understanding it the whole way through and when i told her this she said you got it <laughs> i was like yeah damn straight i do we got it i absolutely believe we got it and for the first time ever which is why i use this thumbnail for the live show was because the for all of these years when the time came and then went and came and then went and we were drawing closer and we were diligently seeking and more revelation about all parts and other pieces and all throughout scripture now from the beginning of genesis right to the end there was always more that the lord would give right i mentioned it in the live show our brother mark skidari that i talked to regularly it was always a little bit more he stopped being concerned uh, probably a couple of years ago he's been following probably four and a half years or more and he would always in the beginning you know we'd always kind of stress out because we're like man we thought this was it we thought we were, this was it but what happened is the lord would give us more more understanding it wasn't always about the date that you know it wasn't always the date and nor is it still always the date and it would draw closer because as we continued more revelation more parts more pieces more things that were confusion began to be understood and revealed more and more and more this is the first time and i spoke to mark about it this is the first time where i had gone now too far going into into uh late july that the lord actually reined me in and and showed through the revelation and showing that no it's earlier it is before not after taurus it is before Taurus, not after Taurus. It's going to blow your mind. If you've watched the live show, this last video, that's probably why it doesn't have all that many views yet, it is because one, it was a live show. So many of you guys watched it over on 165. You can still watch it over there if you want, or you can watch it here. You'll have more insight because you got Mike's side of, of what he was seeing as well, and it's going to blow your mind. Well, today is the add on to that. It is, it is the, it is the the parts and pieces of it that bring clarity. Do you guys know? For anybody that's new that hasn't been around for a while, if if you've been if you had understood how these revelations have have continuously proved themselves, there's always I haven't talked about this one in a while, but I used to talk about it quite a bit because when it first happened, man, it was one. Of, it, there's been so many mind blowing ones, but what had happened was when I realized for the first time that it was the Lord returning on heavenly Mount Zion at the end of seals. That's why everybody's freaking out and panicking and hiding in the rocks and hide us from the face of him. That's just the Lord at the end of seals. You see, we have the revelation of 14 years. That is just at the end of six, at the start of the seventh year. And when I realized that, because I realized what Zechariah was showing us and the Lord is there on Mount Zion at the beginning of, of tabernacle, uh, at the beginning of trumpets, you know, at the uh, in chapter eight, and the Lord is there, and He says, "Let their hands be strong, because now they're going to build." And you realize it has nothing to do with the Antichrist building the temple and then defiling it. The Lord is going to be here, and they're going to be brought back in, and they're going to rebuild the city and the streets and the temple. And and when it dawned on me, and when I realized, oh my word, and I did that first video, I was freaking out when I did that video on it. But what happened afterwards? Then I did another video. And this always happens like this, almost always, that a second video shortly after, or usually immediately the following video, I've got more clarity to make it come together where you're, to, to show it, I mean, together, where, where you're not like, well, what about this piece or what about that piece? And now, uh, like a revelation like that, it's just part of our everyday conversation. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. That's the way it becomes, you know? Oh yeah, yeah. Because now we know it so well. It has proved itself over and over and over from the beginning of creation to the end that we have understood it. And that's kind of what's happening here today as well. We're getting this. We, we, I got the revelation. Mike had another view because of what he was seeing. He was like, no way, man. I'm not going all the way to, to June into late July. Forget that. I'm not waiting out that long. It's too far, man. There's got to be something else. And he found something. So he had something. I had something. I started to put it together and I revealed what it was. Now, 
I am going to give you the confirmation. It is going to be an absolute confirmation. I am, I, I believe it with all my heart. And if I believe it's a confirmation, guess what? It's not a thus say it the Lord. It's just going to be another what? I absolutely believe this is it. I absolutely believe this is it. I have never understood this before. And you know what? There's no way of understanding this if you have not understood the revelation of Taurus. If you have not understood that Taurus to the Lord God, Father in heaven, Taurus is the beginning. Taurus is not only the beginning as it was back in the creation, every single year to the Lord God, Taurus is the beginning. The, the sun has moved, but Taurus to the Lord God is the beginning. And we're going to talk about that. I'm going to break it down and, and why I was seeing Taurus as the beginning, as the start of the 50 and not the end of the 50. Okay. We're going to explain that. I broke that down to my wife when I was telling her about it. She's like, well, yeah, it made sense that you would think that it means Taurus. So Taurus is the beginning. So that's where it's going to start. But when I explain this revelation, whoa, that's when she said, you got it. She caught it right away. And I've shared it already. Uh, I was on, on phone calls already. I was like conference calls. And, you know, I've shared it with a number of you guys already because a lot of you guys didn't want to wait for this video. <laughs> and I don't blame you. But I'll tell you what, man, it's it's so exciting. You're, I'm going to I'm going to break it down. I'm going to show the explanation why. Uh, why we were looking on the other side of, of Taurus, Feast of Weeks time, instead of on the beginning side, right? 50 days before Taurus, Feast of Weeks, not 50 days starting at Taurus, Feast of Weeks. You're going to see it all, and you're going to see this incredible revelation that it all is about the creation in the beginning. That's how crazy it is. In the beginning, in that term, in that word, knowing that Taurus is the beginning, the word definition itself in the beginning gives the rest of the answer. It's awesome. It's so awesome. And I got to do this as I always do. I'll be quick about it. Anybody who is new to the ministry or newer to the ministry and hasn't yet come to this playlist, you're going to want to come to this playlist. This one right here, Revealed End Time Study Note Series, because like you will have already heard, <coughs> is me talking about 14 years. You're going to hear who the Gospels are speaking to. You're going to hear some things that if you're new, you will have never heard before. But I promise you with every bit of every ounce of my words and breath that I say, It'll be worth every moment of your time. You want to start with these three videos right here. They are Bible studies. This is a 30-minute Bible study to help you begin to understand why we have differences <coughs> in the Gospels about the same stories. So with the Synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you're going to see <coughs> excuse me, so many differences that people have either called contradictions, that 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 pastors that said, oh, it's just different perspectives. No, it isn't. Some of them are so different. It's completely different events. Okay. And many of you guys, if you've studied scripture, you'll know this as well, because these things will most certainly have stood out to you and confused you at some point as well. What you're going to realize is that Matthew, Mark, and Luke in the end of days is Luke, Mark, and Matthew. Luke is written to the bride of Christ. Mark is written to the world, the 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 this church that wasn't ready that that's asleep you know they proclaim maybe christ but they're not ready they're not diligent they're not in christ they're they're kind of in christ okay and then you've got matt and that would also be like the house of israel right because they scattered throughout the earth and then you got matthew which is to judah but because the whole world has been taught from matthew and looked at mark and luke as just extra information it was never understood who they were speaking to and so everybody for hundreds of years was taught from the gospel of Matthew. And we have this video called it's all because of Matthew. It's a big one and it's worth every moment of your time because you're going to understand that the reason Luke, Mark and Matthew and being written to different people 
to different groups in the in the prophetic that's written in it because it wasn't understood everybody looked at everything they were reading especially in the prophetic they were reading everything with the eyes of matthew not realizing that mark and luke are separate groups so everything you look at from is from at the eyes of matthew and you don't even realize it your entire perspective is from judah's perspective and that's why you think there's seven years of tribulation that is for the jews you know why because it's as if you're at the end of mark's gospel it's like you're at the end of mark's gospel so you believe in a pre-trip that's what you think because you're going at the beginning of seven years before jacob's trouble you would say of matthew's gospel uh, of of the house of judah has their seven years of tribulation but because you didn't know who Mark and Luke were speaking to, where you think is pre-trib before the seven years start is actually mid-trib rapture in the seventh year of seals, which is why the great multitude rapture is in Revelation chapter seven between the sixth and the seventh seal. Do you think that's a mistake? No, it's revelation being understood. The truth is 14 years. It's always been 14 years. But it was revealed through this ministry by first starting with an understanding of who the Gospels are speaking to. You're going to realize that the differences in the Gospels and their stories was for prophecy. It's not just about the discourses. The entire Gospels are prophetic built all throughout them not just the discourse mark is a group that is called in christ okay let me show you this mark sorry sorry luke luke is a group that are those in christ like romans talks about see i knew a man this is paul in a typology in a prophetic i knew a man in christ above 14 years ago that's what we're going to talk about today the revelation that confirms the 50 days which is the above that comes before Taurus, which is the beginning. So in Christ, above 14 years ago, then you see such and one. So kind of, but not really in Christ. This group are those in Christ. These are the ones Romans 8 talks about. Those who are in Christ, spirit-filled sons of God will be co-heirs with Christ. Those who are leaving above 14 years, 50 days before the 14 years begins. This is the rapture group. This is such as one, meaning kind of. These are the ones that will endure seals. This is the Mark group. This Luke group in Christ, in white, they will go to the third heaven. Okay? They go to the third heaven. Sorry, sorry, I was in the wrong spot. This is the in Christ. Here it is right here. And I knew such a man. This such and one means like, sorry, means like. So the in Christ, Romans description, Romans chapter 8, co-heirs with Christ, those who are in Christ, spirit-filled, are going like a rapture, like a caught up to the third heaven. This is the other group. Such and one, like the ones in Christ, kind of. Not really, but kind of. Yikes, I, I wouldn't want to be that, would you? You might want to be repentant, right? Diligently seek the Lord. Pray, love, right? I don't, I'd, I don't want to be a such an one, a, a, a such a man. I would rather be in Christ, right? And the other reason is because this group is the group that is going to be the was caught up to paradise. This is the rapture group. You see, when the Lord returns on heavenly Mount Zion at the end of the sixth year of seals, this is the rapture group in Revelation chapter 7 between the sixth and the seventh seal, which will be in the seventh year of tribulation. This is the great multitude rapture to paradise. And then you see he says he's here the third time, but now he's ready to come to them. This is when he returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. This is Luke, Mark, and Matthew. 
a taking to the third heaven, a taking to paradise, and a returning feet down on the Mount of Olives. You're going to realize that pre, mid, and post are all true. And the revelation of understanding begins with who the Gospels are speaking to. The end time years are seven years of seals and seven years of trumpets. And there's a portion of 50 days that is referenced as above or but before these things. That is the period of time of the escape and Luke's discourse, the period of 40 to 50 days, and then the 14 years beginning of Mark's discourse and Matthew. And this one is going to reveal to you the understanding of how Mark and Luke were missed. So when you say seven years and you believe you're going pre-trib and you're pointing to Matthew 24, everything you're talking about is the mid-trib rapture in the seventh year of seals. That ain't easy to swallow, is it? It doesn't mean you're not going pre-trib. It just means you haven't understood the revelation of it. That's all. If you're loving the Lord, you're diligent, you're seeking him, you're repentant, it's okay. Keep doing those things. But if you're here, you're probably meant to be here. You're going to see pre-mid and post is all true. You're going to see the seven churches of the end of days revealed for the first time. It has never been understood before this ministry. This is incredible stuff. And you can come down here and understand why there are also the differences in the discourses. Because they are all separate periods of time to different groups. It's mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing, and it's worth every moment, I promise you. All right? So, let's now get into this. Oh, guys, I got to show you this. Check this out. Our sister Jodell shared this with me. You guys know our sister Jodell, right? What she was, was the she was the one that confirmed the um, the the revelation, right, of the whole having understood it, right, that the revelation was fifty days, fourteen years, and the fiftieth jubilee. <laughs> You're gonna want to remember that. You see, guys, that that is this ministry, right? It it's the video. Let me go to it. It's the video called. I've talked about it a number of times, even throughout everything, but I want to show it to you. Oh, you're going to want to remember this one too, old before new. We're going to touch on that briefly today. But it's the, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Right here. The end time code. The end time code that was revealed here in this ministry is 50 days, 14 years, and the 50th Jubilee. That is the revelation of the end of days. And that's what this video here was about. Oh, please, you didn't do it, did you? It always resets the page. I wanted to show it to you, especially for anybody that's new. It was, we talked about it there in the live show as well. But it's important to show because I want you to see what this title was when I did it. And you'll understand what the conversation is about. This video right here. This video, which was done March 10th, 2020, was the video that says, you see, after the 50th, tribulation begins this year. I might as well say that right now, right? After the 50th, tribulation begins this year. This video was the revelation of this right here, the, the 14 of the meaning noon, and 14 equals 50, and, and the entire revelation of that. And I was going to take the video down if the Lord didn't confirm it to me because I, I had realized what I had said. And I was like, no, I'm taking the video down unless you confirm to me with the number 50 and that I have understood that I'm on track, and bam, Jodell, that night, about one o'clock in the morning, I get an email, I was up, and I see it, and it says, Holy Spirit gave it to me, I know what this means to say, the Spirit gave it to me, I stopped at the 50 minute, minute mark of your video, and she, and she knew that she had to give to me what the Spirit had given her, which was to tell me, in quotations, that I was right on target. That opened up this entire ball of wax. This was the whole thing. This was the start of it all. And look at what it is. 50. It's the 50 days 
then the 14 years of the tribulation when it begins, then it's the 50th Jubilee. Well, guess what? Listen to this. Our sister Jodell caught this in the live show. Look at this. Neil and Donna both had a right on target symbol put up. Check this out. Look at this. It's at the 4948. Okay. This is the live show. Listen to the words spoken at exactly the 50 minute mark. And remember, the conversation taking place in here is about that video I just showed you about the Holy Spirit having revealed and confirmed 50, 14 years, 50th Jubilee. Listen to this. The day before, and I started to look at it and I said, you know what? We really need, I really need to go back and dig more into this video <laughs> that the Holy Ghost <laughs> Did you see that? I'm at 5001. At the moment of 50, I say that the Holy Ghost, as soon as it turned 50, I said Holy Ghost confirmed at the moment it turned 50. I thought that was pretty cool. I had to share it. She caught that and shared it with me. And I was just like, man, of course, of course, right? That's just the way it works. All right. Now let's get going in this. Let me show you guys some things. Let's go into Leviticus 23. Sip of coffee. Let's go into Leviticus 23. Remember what I said. I'm going to start with not the, the confirming revelation, but I'm going to start with a, a remembering that was brought to my spirit of something we had already taught so that you guys will understand what it is that that the lineup is in this count. Okay? Here's what I mean. Um, how can I, sh maybe the calendar is the best way to show it. <laughs> All right, let's do it with the calendar. And everything I'm going to share with you, we are running it off the Hebrew calendar, okay? The Hebrew calendar, when true Passover is. But it's on, of course, within the Gregorian calendar. Remember, we discussed this, right, in the, in the live show. The, the Jews back then, when, when Constantine and all that came about, and the Romans and the persecution, they had to disregard their lunisolar calendar and go only solar, which is like the Gregorian. Okay, but when they came back into the land in 1948, once this all got started again, they were running loony solar again. Okay, there's nobody attacking them for running loony solar. They're running loony solar again, and we're going to have a big discussion about this as we get to the later part in the video. Because we want to understand and know if the sun and the moon have been accounted for. This was a conversation I had with some of the brothers and sisters uh, in, uh, in a Zoom today that we did privately. Okay. But here's what I want to show you. We've covered this in the past, and it is true. In Leviticus 23, verse 15, starting in 15, so this is all about the Feast of Weeks. It says, And you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought in the sheaf of the wave offering. Okay? Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So when was the wave offering brought in? At the Feast of First Fruits. Okay? Then shall you bring a sheaf of first fruits of your harvest unto the priest, okay? And you shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted to you on the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest, priest shall wave it. And, uh, and you shall offer that day when you wave the sheaf, a he lamb without blemish. Bam, okay? And what do we see? Who is this first fruits? Well, this is Christ, of course, right? Chief this beginning. He is the only one Without leaven, of course, right? This is all about being without leaven, without blemish, no leaven, okay? Whereas we know that the Feast of Weeks is the one are the ones with leaven, okay? This first fruits, as we've shown, is the same word as in the beginning at the very first verse of the entire Bible at the beginning of creation. It was in the beginning. It was first fruits Jesus, but it was more than that. It was more than just saying it was Jesus. Wait till you find out. So 
when was that wave sheaf, right? So it says, we just saw when it was. So on the morrow, see, from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering. So where would that be? Okay. Sheaf of the wave offering, a lamb without blemish. This is the Sabbath. So the morrow after the Sabbath is the 16th, which means what? There's a Sabbath. That's one Sabbath. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? There's our seven Sabbaths. Exactly like it said, from the date that the sheaf of the wave offering is brought in. All right? From the Sabbath, the, 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 uh, from the morrow after the Sabbath. Then seven Sabbaths shall be complete. We just finished right there. Leviticus 23, 15. Unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall you number 50 days. Now you count out 50 days. And when you do that, you shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord, and you shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenth deals. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be baked, bacon with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. See, this is a different first fruits. See that? This is a different first fruits. That's because Christ is the first fruits of the feast of first fruits. And the, the bride group in the portion of the workers are the first fruits of the wheat harvest. And remember, I told you to remember that video because there's old wheat and new wheat. That's the difference between these two things. You see this feast of weeks? Then it has a 50-day count. But when do you observe? When do you have this new meat offering and 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 the wave loaves and everything else at the beginning of the 50th day on day one when you start to count 50 days after the seven sabbaths okay there's your seventh sabbath that's day one of 50. then from there you number 50 days that is how it works but you notice afterwards there's no conversation about the 50th day unless you're in the New Testament. In the New Testament, then you have the 50 days, which are the Pentecost days. Okay? So the question was that if the bride goes, whoops, if the bride is going at the Feast of First Fruits, and this is the 50-day count to here. And this is actually the count of the Feast of Weeks. What about the 50 days of the Pentecost in Acts? You see, this was something I never covered in the live show. Because in the back of my mind, I thought, oh, wait a second. Is there still another 50? You know, was it the 49? And now... We still have another 50 to count to do the Pentecost count because we know here Pentecost, uh, the Feast of Weeks and Pentecost are not the same. But do you understand why the church has agreed with Judah, right? With the Jews, why do they put uh, a Feast of Weeks at the same time as, uh, uh, why do they add Pentecost at the same time as the Feast of Weeks? Because they're all looking from Matthew. They got Matthew's perspective. They're not understanding it. You see, and why did the Jews only call it the 50th day when it says 50 days? Right? We've talked about this a lot regularly here. Look at this. The 14th day, the 15th day. Don't you think if this was supposed to only be recognized as the 50th day, it would have said, then shall you number the 50th day? Everywhere else in this chapter, it says it. This one says, then shall you number 50 days. It's a literal counting of 50 more days. Okay, but guess what? When you go to Deuteronomy 16, and we go to the story of Feast of Weeks, listen to what it says. Seven weeks, right? Shabuas. What are Shabuas? Shabuas are, of course, you know it. A Shabua is Feast of weeks we, we we don't want to forget that shabuah is feast of weeks 
seven weeks okay thou shall number unto thee beginning to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn and thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the lord thy god with the tribute of a free will offering of thine hand let me ask you something you see anything there that says 50 days dun, dun, dun. where's 50 days where's then shall thou number 50 days do you know why because all the celebration here is connected to the feast of weeks after they've completed observing seven weeks seven sabbaths to the feast of weeks there's no 50 mentioned why because 50 is new testament pentecost is the difference between the wheat harvests do you guys remember that let me see if i i'm sure i've got it up here somewhere there it is okay there is spring wheat and there is winter wheat spring wheat is sown in the spring and is harvested in the fall winter wheat is sown in the fall lives through winter and is harvested it's late spring early summer okay what is this this is the story that i was telling you guys about that i said remember the difference in the wheat remember it's old wheat compared to new wheat what is the story of old wheat compared to new wheat okay old before new you guys remember what this story is right old before new is the story of genesis in genesis chapter 29 and the story with jacob leah and rachel okay he he works seven years remember what he says in genesis 29 20 he says okay i'll, I'll serve seven years for your daughter and in, tw in verse 20 he says and jacob served you're going to want to remember this we're going to be talking about this today and jacob served seven years for rachel and then a very interesting phrase and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love that he had for her okay he was so excited to to get his bride that those seven years flew by like they were days okay this is something we've talked about in the past and we're going to talk about it in greater detail in connection to the revelation and then what does it say we know he ends up getting leah he wakes up in the morning he is so ticked off because he was duped into getting leah instead of rachel and he ends up getting rachel after the uh, after leah's wedding he gets rachel but he still has to serve seven more years for her right well listen to what it says in genesis 29 26 it says and laban said it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn what does that mean it means you have to take the older before you get the newer okay it is the old before the new it is the winter wheat before the spring wheat and when we've taught on this we showed what this means right what you have is the time when winter wheat when winter wheat that was planted late fall just before winter takes root and then grows and is harvested late spring early summer that is winter wheat and when they harvest it it's not because it's old it just means it's just a term for winter wheat when they harvest it they can begin to use it right away this is the winter wheat this is the old before the new this is what he was saying the first born don't you get it first born must go first first born those that belong to the lord the co-heirs with christ who's what you see they're all the first born that go to the lord first the old the winter wheat has to go first and then what do you have then you have a 50-day count right somewhere wherever it is around here then you have a 50-day count 
to Pentecost. Pentecost is the new wheat that is the one that was planted in the spring, grows throughout, and is harvested late summer into fall. Hello. But when this wheat comes in, the Jews, they, they, they're not allowed to use it right away. They have to wait. It's the story we've told on, uh, on Kadosh and Yoshon, the difference in the wheats. And the one, which is this spring wheat, when it's harvested in the fall, they can't use it until the second day of Passover, the following year. It's just like the rapture. When the rapture for the paradise group happens, they cannot be, like at the end of the, of the six years of seals, they will have seen the Lord coming, but their, their time of going into the rapture isn't going to happen for about six more months, probably about seven months before they're actually in and it's all done. Even though it ended and you had the Lord was there and they saw it and they were freaking out. That's why Mark says they don't know when. You see, that's why there's the bearing of the bones for seven months. They don't know when they're going in. It's about in the midst of the seventh year of seals because they are the representation of the spring wheat. The pre-trib bride is the representation of the old wheat, the firstborn. It's a big deal. It's a, it, that was a great revelation when we got it too. But so was this. This one is extremely exciting. This entire thing. It was seven years. But it seemed as if it was only a few days because he was so in love. It just flew by. When we've taught on this in the past, what have I showed you guys? Well, what's the revelation of the end of days? Okay, it's 21 years and the 22nd year is the final Jubilee. But there's no real discussion about the first seven years, right? The Holy Spirit has been working and people and the bride has been waking up and he's been getting them ready, giving them eyes to see, ears to hear, a heart to receive. But the only count that is connected to the beginning of the end of days before the 14 years is this above 14 years is this portion right here which is the 50 days i added this line here today which is this 50 days this is the seven years that he worked but they only felt like days it's awesome and what we did with this is we revealed it in the creation story. So you see, just like the end of days, what was it? It was seven years and they flew by like days for the love that he, have, that he had for his soon-to-be bride. Right? We showed the same type of thing with, um, with Judges chapter 15, right? His bride and getting his bride. In fact, let's go to it just real quick as a little side note. 21 chapters? Oh. Hmm. Do you think that's by accident? And these 21 chapters go in reverse. Look at what happens. But it came to pass within a while after the time of the wheat harvest that Samson visited his wife with a kid. And he said, I will go in unto my wife into the chamber. But her father would not suffer him to go in. And her father said, I verily thought that thou had truly hated her. Kind of like the, the Leah and Rachel story, right? He goes in, he gets, he gets Leah. He doesn't know it. He comes out. And he's fuming, Jacob is, because he got Leah instead of Rachel. Okay? And what happened? Oh, father thought you, I thought you hated her. He says, therefore, give her, I gave her to your companion, the Holy Spirit. Ha ha, you see? Therefore, I gave her to the Holy Spirit. Who's the first group, guys? Those who are in Christ, spirit-filled, living by the Spirit. Go read the beginning of Romans 8. Uh, is not her younger sister? <laughs> wasn't rachel the younger sister isn't this one the firstborn and this one's the younger sister old before new 
I thought you hated her, so I gave her to your companion, like the Holy Spirit, right? Is not her younger sister fairer than she? Take her, I pray thee, instead of her. It's everywhere, guys. It's all throughout these revelations, okay? It's all throughout. So I wanted you to understand that this, this connection and this difference in why Leviticus 23 has a 50-day count to Pentecost and why Deuteronomy 16 doesn't have an additional count. Because Deuteronomy 16 is the official one of the Feast of Weeks, whereas the one in Leviticus is saying that there is an additional 50 days. But what are you told about it? Nothing. Nothing. You see? It's kind of like Rachel. So he serves for, for Rachel, but he gets Leah, right? We're the Gentile bride. Christ, Christ didn't want his gen, the Gentiles, right? The Holy Spirit came and the Gentiles received, and Christ was accepting them along the way, of course. But he came for the lost sheep of Israel. That's the group he came to shed light on. That's the Mark group, right? He came to save the world that was lost. Note those that are saved. So when the escape happens, everybody that's saved, everybody that's in Christ, spirit-filled, he didn't come for them. He's coming now to save the lost, right? So that first group, spirit-filled, that Leah group is going to be removed. I'm not saying she's only going to be given uh, 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 to the spirit. I'm not saying Jesus hates her. We're just looking at these typologies, right? <laughs> she is the loyal wife, the loyal bride. And so what we're seeing here is that this is the Feast of Weeks, old wheat that is observed right away. This numbering to the end of 50 days is also connected to wheat, but it is the new wheat, the spring wheat, the Rachel type that won't be observed until the end of the sixth year of seals and then observed when the rapture comes in and then it'll take seven months approximately before they're all in and the rapture is actually done. You see? Because they're both connected to the wheat. Let me show you what I mean. What did this bring about in the revelation? You see, for a number of years, myself included, but I had gone back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I would see it and then I'd say, oh, maybe not. And then I'd see it and oh, maybe not. Because you see, if Judah has the count here, if the church has the count here, if you count it as seven Sabbaths from the time it says, and then you start to number, and you make this the 50th day, I mean, it's, it's there. It's accurate. So I, I would hum and haw going back and forth. Is it really adding another 50 days and back and forth? Until one day when it dawned on me and we found this revelation. You guys remember this? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. This was yet another mind melt of revelation. Because what did it reveal? More mysteries of the gospels and who they're speaking to. We have here in 1 Corinthians 15, 4, the resurrection of Christ on the third day. Then it says, starting from 1 Corinthians 15, 5 through 8, it says, And that he was seen of Caiaphas, then of the twelve. Everybody thinks this means the twelve apostles as disciples. Everybody confuses the bananas out of this. Do you know why? They bundle it all together as one mishmash piece of confusion. They called the apostles the disciples. I heard another uh, something today. And, and the reference, they were talking about disciples. And then they said the apostles as in disciples. And they meant apostles. But they kept saying disciples. And sometimes they would say apostles. That's not what it was. Apostles were apostles. Disciples were disciples. He chose 12 apostles from among the disciples. 
which made them apostles and made the others disciples. You see? But there was more groups than that. This is the 12. He was seen of Caiaphas, right, Peter? Then of the 12. We revealed the entirety of this revelation, which is what? Matthew, Mark, John, Luke. Watch this. Who are the 12? They represent the 12 tribes, right? We can show it to you right here in Revelation 21. When it's all done and New Jerusalem is coming down, what do we see? We see the foundations and in them had the names of the 12 apostles. The walls were 144 cubits. They were like the 144,000 workers, right? That will work during trumpets. And what about the gates? Look at this. And the 12 gates were the 12 pearls. They were the 12 tribes. The apostles are not the 12. See how crazy that is? Look at this. Which were, see, and they had 12, 12 gates, which were the names of the 12 tribes. This one had the 12 apostles. You see, they are not the same. And, and when this has been read to us, I mean, it never even dawned on me. I don't know what kind of questions people had over the years. But listen to the story. He meets with the 12 first. Okay? Listen to what it says. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part still remain. Who are these? The 144,000, the typology of the 144,000 workers. When did he meet with them? After he met with the heads of the 12 tribes. What did it say after he met with this group? After that, he met with James, then of all the apostles. He met with a group of 12. He met with a larger group. He then met with apostles. And then, of course, last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. This is Paul as a representation of the Luke group pre-trib escape of the bride of Christ and remnant workers. Who are the rest? Who are the 12? Who are the ones that represent the gates through which everybody will come through in the millennial reign? The tribes. Go to Matthew's discourse. It says, then the tribes mourn. Right? It's the 12 that represent Matthew. The 12 tribes. Then what? What is this after that? Who does this represent? This is a representation of the end of Mark and the 144,000. This, after that, this is the apostles. This is the gospel of John. This represents John group when the apostles end up getting anointed at the beginning of the 50 days, when the Lord breathes on them and leaves to go to the wedding to Leah. Okay, so what happens first? The pre-trib escape of the Luke group, Matthew's group, Mark, the, uh, the, the, the workers from Matthew working during the millennial reign, the workers from Mark working trumpets, the apostles that are going to work during seals. These are the foundations layers. These are the walls. These are the gates at the end. Matthew. Mark, John, Luke. What is it in the end? Luke, John, Mark, Matthew. What does this mean? Who are the ones born out of due time? The ones born out of due time. Go to Revelation chapter 12. Listen to this. And there appeared a woman crowned with a sign with the crown and 12 stars. Verse 2. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain do you know what that means that means before this verse begins the escape must have happened because one being born out of due time is being born premature before she travailed 
before her pain came. This is um, uh, Isaiah 66, 7, before her pain she brought forth. So before this, there's a pre-trib group, and that's the Luke group. That is what that is who Paul is representing. You see this down here in verse five, and her child was caught up. This is the great multitude rapture. And all you got to do is read the next things: great red dragon, seven heads, ten horns, right? Just like the time of the Antichrist. You see the the dragon stood right, cast down the stars, through the stars, a third part of the stars. That's towards the end of seals. You got the man child coming who is to rule all nations with the rod. That's the end of the six year of seals. The Lord coming on heavenly Mount Zion. And then you have the was caught up. That's the great multitude rapture in Revelation 7 between the sixth and the seventh seal. Okay. Before she travailed, before her pain, which is going prematurely, that is who Paul represents here, one out of due time. So what did this reveal to us? What was so exciting about this revelation? Well, I don't know about you, but every time you read the Gospels, and I'm sure every time you've read them, uh, you've been told about them, you've probably always been told, oh, it's the disciples as apostles, apostles, disciples, disciples, apostles, and they intertwine them and intermix them like they do everything. Even with seals and trumpets, they intertwine and intermix them, not realizing they are separate sets of events in separate seasons of time. Why? Because everybody has learned from Matthew, 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 because they never understood who the other gospels were speaking to. So when we saw this, and what do we know? Remember, we showed that the beginning, right? Uh, in the uh, introduction videos, you watch that 30 minute intro video about the gospels, you can go to ministryrevealed.com. You can download the book and read the first chapter. It'll give you even greater detail. Read the second chapter about the 14 years. It's going to blow your mind. So what do we know? The first will be last and the last will be first. It goes Matthew, Mark, Luke. But in the end of days, it's Luke, Mark, Matthew. John gives insight to workers. All right. Luke is white. Mark is purple. Matthew is scarlet. Those are the colors Jesus had going to the crucifixion. Were they colorblind? No. So if it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and in the end of days, it's Luke, Mark, Matthew, well, then what do we have? Matthew, Mark, Luke. In the end is Luke, Mark, Matthew. And of course, the apostles. So when the escape happens at the beginning of the 50 days, what happens? The escape of those born out of due time, pre-trib, before the travailing begins, the, the, at the beginning of 50 days, bang, they're gone. What does the Lord do? He's going to meet with the apostles. He's going to anoint them while he goes to the wedding for seven days. At the end of seals, when he comes, what's the first thing at the end of the six years of seals? What's the first thing he does at the end of the six years of seals? Beginning of Revelation chapter 7. He anoints the 144,000. What happens at the end of trumpets when he returns at the sixth year and reestablishes everything? Go read Matthew 28. He's now with them here till the end of the earth. He's here with them during the millennial reign while these guys are sent out to now teach, no longer preach because the whole world will know he's here. But the, the incredible piece was that he meets with this group after that, after that, and last of all, prior to this revelation, I always, I, I'm sure just like every one of you, I thought when he came after his resurrection, he just met with the 12. He met with the 12 and the, there was disciples on the way and then they all went to the upper room. And that was it. Nope. They were different groups of people. And then finally, Paul. This was the revelation of pre, mid, post as well, and that he met with a Matthew group, a Mark group, a John group, then a Luke group. It's the revelation of the end of days. But you know what else it was a revelation of? It was a revelation of if he met with the Matthew group first, and then he met with the group, Mark group second, and then we know when he meets with the apostles is the beginning of 50 days to Pentecost. And 
this is to the end of the 50 days of Pentecost. You following what I'm saying? This Matthew group that he meets with and this Mark group that he meets, meets with was a representation of what? The count of the Feast of Weeks. Seven Sabbaths. Seven Sabbaths. This is the representation of him having met with Matthew's group. After that, he met with Mark's group. And it was during the time of the counting or the numbering of seven Sabbaths. And then what? Then we go to the Gospel of John. And when we go to the Gospel of John, what does he do? He meets with the apostles on day one of 50. He breathes on them. They receive the Holy Ghost. He leaves, returns on the eighth day. And he's now the representation of the 40 days with the Luke group. Those disciples, not apostles now, those disciples follow him until the end of the 40 days in Acts chapter 1. And in Acts chapter 1, they look up having seen him left and they're like, what? And the angels appear to them. And it says not many days from now, which is three days, they now go wait in the upper room where the apostles and these other guys were. They wait in the upper room for the Holy Ghost to come and anoint. What do you have? Mark's group, uh, sorry, Matthew's group and Mark's group. Seven times seven Sabbaths. Then what? 50 days begins to the end of 50 days at Pentecost. What did we reveal in this? How was I able to understand that from the revelation? Well, first of all, I understood who the 12 were. We already understand the revelation of the 144. We know where the apostles are. We know that Luke's group goes first. But what was, how did this relate to the Feast of Weeks count? The Matthew group and the Mark group, what are they in the end of days? What are they in the end of days? Seven years and seven years. So the Feast of Weeks count is what? Seven times seven Sabbaths, right? Seven and seven. But because it's days of weeks, it's a multiple of seven. In the end of days, what is it? It's weeks of years see one two three four five six seven at the end of seven times seven years is 49 years complete at 49 years complete at the end of the 14 years of tribulation is going to be the final jubilee it's the final jubilee so this is the was or the is from christ's time and the reverse is the is to come so what are we looking for are we looking for a count of seven times seven and then the 50 days beginning you see what i'm getting at you see what i'm getting at this discussion was is it seven sabbaths and then the bride goes and it's taurus and then there's another 50 days to pentecost or is it just that there is a 50 day count which still brings us 49 to 50 which is the feast of weeks like a pentecost count because it's still 50 days and the 14 years begins there in taurus why because we're not actually counting feast of weeks we are doing a 50 day count which is the same as the feast feast of weeks but the 49 ends here this is the 50th you see the jews and yet the christians have combined it they, they've overlapped because of seeing everything from a perspective of matthew but this is the revelation right here in the is. So the was is Old Testament. The is is from Christ until the moment of the escape. 
and from the moment of the escape forward is the is to come so in the is at christ's resurrection he met with matthew's group and mark's group this was a period of the seven times seven of sabbaths then he meets also after that with the apostles which begins john and the 50-day count to luke's group to pentecost in chapter 2 of acts but what did we teach about this two years ago we taught we taught that in the end of days in the is to come it goes in reverse so what comes first the beginning of 50 days one born out of due time then he's going to meet and anoint the apostles and he's going to be here for 40 days right he's going to go to the wedding he's going to anoint for four uh, it remained for 40 days with the disciples right that remnant luke group that remains and at the end of 50 days pentecost is over see so what are we doing we're doing in reverse which is from the beginning of pentecost to the end of pentecost and then what do we have seven years and seven years what was seven and seven as days of weeks in the end of days is seven and seven as weeks of years so what am i saying this why am i saying this because this is what we're looking at the escape wait till you see the first fruits revelation and taurus it's going to blow your mind this is the beginning of 50 days this is the escape of the bride of christ and by the way the sun has already been accounted for and i believe the moon has too but we're going to talk about that you see so it, like i said i'm going to stick with the hebrew calendar if the hebrew calendar is correct which i believe it probably is this is day one of 50. this is the 50th day is it really a a feast of weeks count yes but it's also what a pentecost count so to us taking it as we've been teaching from this for two years in reverse goes 50 days then seven years and seven years where in the is it was seven times seven of pentecost then 50 days you see we're doing 50 days of pentecost then seven and seven years why because the end of days is seven years and seven years and when it's done it's the 50th jubilee it's the bigger picture one so what are we looking for the beginning of 50 right to the end of 50. when 50 is done it's 14 years so you see what i'm saying it you can call it pentecost it is a pentecost i mean uh, um, a feast of weeks count but in reverse the revelation is the 50 to pentecost and from the feast of weeks pentecost the 14 years will begin in taurus don't you guys remember that do you guys remember all that watch this let me help some new people see this this is the matthew 12 group this is the group that he meets with look at the great commission he gives these guys see it's called what this is why we get all twisted up because it says it's the 11 disciples so listen to what he says to these quote unquote 11 disciples and then listen to what it says in mark and then listen to what it says in um in luke and what it says in john they're all completely different this was the revelation of the worker groups that we've taught for years now matthew 28 it's the end of matthew it's called the great commission and it says then the uh then the 11 disciples went away into galilee into a mountain where jesus had appointed them and when he saw and when they saw him they worshiped him and some doubted and listen to what he says and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth Do you know that this is yes spiritually yes he has all power but do you think he do you is it apparent to you in your life every day where you walk in all the wars and and the the 
garbage that we see. I don't want to say some of the things because it's so bad. Do you know what this is? All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. This is Revelation 11, the seventh trumpet. Yep. Listen to what he tells them next. Verse 19 into 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Teach. Not a single one here is being told to go and preach. Why is there no preaching? Because the Lord has returned at the end of the trumpets in the seventh year, at the seventh trumpet, and all power in heaven and on earth is now given to him. The whole world saw him return feet down. There's no need for preaching anymore, only to teach of his ways. Listen to verse 20 teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Do you know why? Because at this point, he's going to be here with them for the millennial reign to the end of the world. This is prophetic. This is the 12 in relation to the tribes. These are the ones anointed to teach his ways who will come in through the 12 gates in Jerusalem while he's ruling and reigning for the millennium. Look at what Mark says. Mark 16. This group he's actually angry with. Listen to this. Mark 16, verse 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the 11 as they sat and eat, and he unbraided. He railed on them. You ever hear that expression, right? Railing on somebody, right? That's just ripping them a new one. He unbraided them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not that which they had seen, uh, that which they had seen him after he was risen. Okay? And it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and he and he that baptizes or sorry and he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believes not shall be damned and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils and they shall speak in new tongues they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Uh, you see anything about him ruling and reigning that he's going to be here? Everything of heaven on earth is his and he's here until the end of the world. No. Why, why do they have to preach the gospel? And yet Matthew's group doesn't have to preach the gospel. It's prophetic. These are the 144,000. This is that larger second group from first Corinthians 15. This is that representation. Look at what it says. And he was received up. In Matthew, it says, now I'm here with you until the end of the world. He's not here yet. He's not here until the end of the world. This is the end of six years of seals and the very beginning of the seventh year. Matthew's is the end of the sixth year of trumpets and the beginning of the seventh year of trumpets. What about Luke? In fact, actually, let's go to John. In John, it's in chapter 20. We know John is to the apostles. And what does he do with them? Here he appears to them. It was evening. The doors were shut for fear of the Jews. And what does he say? Peace be unto you. As my father has sent me, I send, I so send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted. 
unto them and whosoever sins you retain they are retained thomas wasn't there and then what did he do he left and came back eight days later he comes back eight days later he briefly meets with this guys with this group and then what does he do on the same time on the eighth day after he briefly meets with the apostles when he returns what does he do he meets with the luke group the 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 remaining uh, uh remnant worker luke group and listen to what it says first of all he appears unto them he opens unto them their understanding and what does he do he sits and eats with them and serves them he does not do that to the others see and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them he took bread blessed it break it and gave it to them he sat to eat and also served them he only does that to this group and now look at what this group that is the remnant worker group has for their commission he opened the their understanding that they might understand the scriptures they're going to have the open revelation of all these understandings and it says and he said unto them thus it is written and thus it behooved christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day that the repentance and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at jerusalem and you are witnesses of these things right because they're following him for 40 days and behold i send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of jerusalem till you be endued with power on high and then what does he do he ascends to heaven but in this time he's carried up all four of them are different because they are four different groups of people and when you read it from matthew mark john luke it's the 12 it's the larger group it's the apostles and it's the disciple workers that is the entire order which means matthew mark was the seven times seven sabbaths and what reveals it is the is to come revelation that after the 50 days which are the seven years that flew by as days is only this portion that is going to make all the difference to the entire planet when those days are over and the seven years are complete which is also going to be the end of 70 to the lord god there's seven and seven and when those seven and seven are done they're the final seven times seven shmita years and it'll be the final 50th jubilee check this out let's go again to uh yes leviticus 23 and you'll see in leviticus 23 the for the feast of weeks right uh from that day that thou brought in the sheaf seven sabbaths shall be complete even unto the morrow after the seventh sabbath shall you number 50 days watch this let's go to leviticus 25. listen to this here's the sabbath in the year format listen to it okay six years thou shall work thy field in the seventh year shall be a sabbath right the you'll often hear it called called or referenced as shemitah years okay so you have what you have a days of weeks count of seven and seven and you have a years of weeks count sevens times seven okay every seventh year is a sabbath how does it work with days of the week every seventh day is the sabbath easy enough right listen to the jubilee count and thou shall number seven sabbaths of years of years unto thee seven times seven years what was the other one seven times seven weeks right days of weeks this is seven times sevens of years and the space of the seven sabbaths of years shall be 49 years what was it what was it with the feast of weeks seven times sabbaths of days of weeks 
is 49 days then shall thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound and what is it called and you shall hallow the 50th year hello what was it weeks of days in the in the daily annual count and in the end of days it's weeks of years what are we looking for 50 days taurus begins the 14 years how do we know that this is connected to taurus okay we're going to talk about that so what are we seeing in all of this 50 days is not a looking for 50 more afterwards because of the revelation of first corinthians chapter 15 is we are following in reverse the end of days revelation is luke's pre-trib escape then he meets with the apostles and the 50 days begins then at the end of seals and the seventh year rest he is meeting with the 144 mark group and when he returns after six years of trumpets feet down on the mount of olives he is meeting in the seventh year of rest with the matthew group who will go out during the millennial reign we've taught this before so we're not looking for it going like this in a week's and then 50 days count. We are looking only at the 50 days count and then weeks as years of seven and seven. That is the revelation from the last video. That was, this is part one. This is the evidence that is 50 days begins and then taurus the 14 years 50 days do you know when the count started third day resurrection every one of those stories was a piece of the resurrection story with prophetic fulfillment to come in it and every single one of them was resurrection in reverse it is still the resurrection in its 50 days and at the feast of weeks the 14 years it'll be the 50th day the anointing of the holy ghost will come like they did in the upper room to those disciples that were there then waiting and they will go from jerusalem that's why luke's is the only one that says from there they will go from jerusalem out to the world from this point here when the holy ghost leaves the compassing about that was happening by syria from the north and those that will be with them the attack will happen at the end of the 50th day and in this place right here jerusalem will be attacked and destroyed they will be removed from the land for the next seven years do you remember how this how how the the count all started all right you guys remember that in daniel chapter 9 which was part of the revelation right which was that video right this video that we were talking about right where the revelation was given from the holy ghost confirming that this video was right on target after the 50th the tribulation begins this year i could not take the video down not because it did happen that year but because the revelation that it contained was the bullseye was the right on target what was a key piece in that video it was this right here 70 
weeks of years are determined upon thy people 70 weeks means what 70 years of weeks one week is one year that's what it means this has all been so twisted up by the church over the years 70 years and what do we see from the commandment to the restore and we see what then it'll be seven weeks right seven weeks of years seven years and comma and when these seven years or seven weeks of years are done for three and a half the city and the streets and the walls are going to be built again when those three and a half are done messiah who came at the end of seals on heavenly mount zion and the rebuilding of the city and the streets happened messiah is going to be cut off and we know the people of the prince that shall come shall make war and shall chase them away with the flood at that point they go on wings of eagles and those people are taken at mid trumpets right ten and a half years into the total of tribulation three and a half years into trumpets they're going to take off on wings of an eagle and they're going to be protected till the end of the 14 till the end of the entirety of the final three and a half years but only during two and a half years which brings us to the end of 13 two and a half years satan is going to have his rule and reign in the temple antichrist is going to be brought back when the pit is open it's going to be absolutely bonkers there's going to be war against the two witnesses that'll last two and a half years which is what's in revelation uh, daniel chapter 12 but remember they're going to still be protected that group on wings of eagles until the end even of the final year how do you know it's the final year look at what it says one week it's week of years meaning one week one year what is this seven weeks seven years what's this 70 weeks 70 years what is a representation of a week you know what it means every single year is what connected to this meaning of feast of weeks it's the hebrew word 7620 which means feast of weeks feast of weeks so what is this saying what do you think this means 70 weeks are determined so whether it's a representation of the 70 years coming to an end right now or whether it's a representation of 70 years in jerusalem it makes absolutely no difference do you know why let me show you where is it what where is it what i don't have it up here anymore okay well what you come to find out is we know that when this 50 days is over the 14 years begin and what is it it's one week as a year and these are the seven weeks of years where they're removed from the land they're attacked and destroyed and removed from the land while seals is taking place that's why Daniel 9 said seven weeks and then comma and every single year is from the feast of weeks the Lord God has never changed what is this equal remember it's four years when you come into the land and then five then it's yours right in the fifth year forward it's theirs that means this year now that we know we know with absolute certainty 100 percent take it to the bank the lord god is counting from taurus taurus which is the month of sivan is 100 percent at the feast of weeks whether it's truly here 
or whether somehow it's down here. I do believe it's here because we know it's 50 days. The Lord of God, the, the Lord God has never changed from the beginning of creation. It was Taurus as the beginning. And like the 12 places on a clock, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. They never, ever change. The Lord God's constellations never, ever change. It is the sun and the moon, the hours and the minute hands that spin and spin and stop and the battery's got to be changed and they move and they speed up and sometimes they slow down. But the hours never, ever, ever change. And the Lord God has always counted from Taurus. 100% at all times, every time the Lord God begins in Taurus. Taurus is the feast of weeks. What do you think this says? This, you can also say 70 feasts of weeks. Which means what? Which means 70 feasts of weeks. It means every year at the feast of weeks is where the count is. Why do you think that is? Do you think the Lord God knew that the sun was going to speed up by two months? Of course he did. Of course he did. In that video, I revealed that we now knew with certainty absolute that the Lord God was counting the start of his year from the Feast of Weeks. Taurus. Taurus, 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 Taurus. Now we know. Now we know again. <laughs> now we're reminded. It is Taurus. You guys remember this? In the beginning, right? In John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word. The same was in the beginning with God. And then what? In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And then it starts talking about John, right? The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. Okay? John was the lesser light, which is Hanukkah probably. And Jesus is the great light. Okay? John was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light. What do we know about in the beginning before the light? Of course, we know all about it, right? Now we're going to reveal this in a way in a, in a level deeper that has never been seen before. Here's your, in the beginning, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God, right? What do we know also? This is the gap, what people call the gap theory, right? What have we proven it out to know? What do we know about it? It's the spirit realm right here. Then what happened? Then Jesus was made light. That's the Mark group, that he came to shed light in the darkness. Jesus never came for those who were spirit-filled. He came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which is represented now by the world and the Gentiles grafted in, who are asleep, who aren't prepared. He's coming to save the lost, not those who are spirit-filled. They're going to be removed. And then what? Well, when we go back into into john when we go into john one where are you oh i am in john one <laughs> when we go to john one then what do we see and the word was made flesh so you have spirit in the beginning you have him being made light and then he became flesh what do we know about this story in creation in the beginning was the spirit of god this is called the gap theory and people have wondered for decades if it means that was the dinosaurs over millions of years no 
it was 7,000 years. 7,000 years. That's right. 7,000 years. Don't you see this was the entire revelation of it? 7,000 years. It's the spirit group. It's the Luke group. It's those who are of this the spirit of God and the sons of God co-heirs with Christ. It's literally the exact wording from Romans chapter 8 with those with the spirit of God that are those that what? See that? There it is. In Christ who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Who were those in Christ? You got it. Those that go pre-trip. Those that are spirit-filled, not living by the flesh. And what does it say about them? Verse uh, Romans 8, verse 14. So as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Okay? Those who are led by what? The spirit of God they are the sons of God. The Spirit itself bears witness with them that they are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. What were they called? Those that are led by the Spirit of God, right? We covered this. What are those? Who are those led by the Spirit of God? Bam. Those that were part of the gap theory creation. It's not a theory. The entire story from the beginning of creation to the very end is 21,000 years and the 22nd thousandth year is the beginning of eternity. What did John say? In the beginning was the word first, All right? And the word was with the spirit and then what? And the word was made light. Bam, Jesus here is made light. What starts here? Days, right? Days. Day one, two, three, four, five, six days. Going to chapter seven, seventh day he rested. Watch this. We'll go into Second Peter 3 8. We come into Second Peter 3 8, and it says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day, okay, what did we just see? One day, day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven was the seventh day of rest, is with the Lord as a thousand years. So, who was there in the creation of days? The Lord was, right? So, to the Lord, they were all one day each. But what are they to us as a thousand years each? Hello. Which means that creation of days in the light portion was actually, if we were looking at it as fleshly people looking in our dimension of time and seeing that take place, the creation of days would have been 7,000 years. Isn't that wild? And then what does it say? Comma and, which means separate, but added together. What's next? And a thousand years, is as a day, which means a thousand years to us that we're living in, to the Lord, each of those thousand is a day. Well, what happens after the seven days that were as thousands to us, but to the Lord were only seven days, what happens next? Then the Lord God formed man of the earth, right? From the dust of the earth. And what did it start? The flesh. Was this Christ in the garden? No, I do not believe this was Christ in the garden. But what do we know about Adam and Christ? Christ, in 1 Corinthians 15, by the way, is called what? The last or the second Adam, right? So Christ and Adam have a similarity in that what? The Lord God created him. The Lord God formed Adam, a type of Christ, right? A typology of Christ. That's why he's called the last Adam. And what was he made here? Flesh. When he was made what? Flesh. 
what did it start? <laughs> you got it. The portion of flesh. And we are still living in the realm of flesh. What did John say? The third one was flesh. The third one was flesh. And what did and what did uh second Peter 3 8 tell us? I love that. I love telling about this. It's so incredible. Then he said, What? And a thousand years. Well, guess what? Since the flesh started, we've been living in this dimension of time where to us it's a thousand years each, but to the Lord, it's as one day still. So here we are living in what? The thousands of years. When the tribulation of the 14 years is over, guess what? It's the millennial reign. When the millennial reign is over, it'll be the end of what? The 7,000 of the flesh since Adam, which to the Lord God is still seven days. What about these days that were as thousands? That's the mark group. That was when the Lord was made light. And this is the light group. You see, so that makes it what? That makes it the mark group. Who did Jesus come to save? He's coming to save as he came to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He's coming to save those who are in darkness. Those who aren't ready. Those who aren't spirit filled, diligently seeking. <coughs> the spirit group goes to the third heaven. The light group is going to paradise. The flesh group is heaven on earth. You see what's happening? We are all living in Matthew's portion of time, which is to the Jews. They are his people. Those are the ones he chose. And we are all living in their portion of time, which is the flesh. Isn't it a wonder? why we're studying from their books and the revelation and everything comes from their books that we're told to pray for the jews and lift up and strengthen the jews because we're living in their portion so you've got people living in the spirit that are part of their flesh portion you got people that are the light group living in the flesh portion who's got to be taken out first the spirit you see this revelation of the end of days was the revelation of creation. This is Jacob's story as well. What did he do? He worked seven years that flew by like days because he was so in love and excited to work. Then what did he do? Then he had to put in another Seven years, he got Rachel after the wedding, but he had to put in another seven years. After the seven years, what did he do? He worked six more years for the cattle. And then what happened? At the end of those 20 years or at the end of the 13 years, he made a covenant with his father-in-law. What happens at the end of the 13th year of trumpets or at the end of 13 years of trumpets? Remember what Daniel said? That final year of weeks, that week as a year, what happened in the end of that final one? He renews the covenant that he made. What, what did Jacob and his father-in-law do at the end of 20 years? They made a covenant. It is the story repeating itself, repeating itself, and the story of creation is this incredible fractal that we've shared in the past. To the Lord God, that gap theory of two of two verses was actually a period of time to the Lord God as seven days. To us, if we were there in the time dimension we're in now, that gap theory would have actually played out like 7,000 years. But as Jacob, he, they flew by. As the Lord, he was so excited to begin his creation of the Spirit that it flew by like days. 
and we've only got two blips of verses. Then what do we get? Then we had the creation of days, which to the Lord God, they were days. But he just told us that to us in 2 Peter 3, 8, they would be as thousands if we were there looking in the time dimension. They would have been thousands each. And then from Adam, we began the actual time dimension of thousands, but to the Lord God, they are still days, as 2 Peter 3, 8 said. The story to the Lord God is 21 days and then the final 22nd, which is eternity. To us, it would have seemed as if it would have been 21,000 years. But it only began the flesh almost 6,000 years ago. When the 6,000 years of flesh is done at the end of tribulation, it will have been the end of 20,000 years since in the beginning. But all we get for it is two little verses. It is the revelation of Scripture itself that has revealed these things to us. This is the mystery of all mysteries. Do you know what else is connected to this mystery of all mysteries within it? It's Luke. It's the spirit group. It's those who are of the spirit of God, spirit filled, who are in the dimension time of flesh, but living by the spirit. They are the sons of God, co-heirs with Christ. You following? This is the mystery. Do you know what else is the mystery in the end of days? The pre-trib escape, or what the people call the pre-trib rapture. Do you know why it's a mystery? Because it too is not obvious. If you go to Revelation chapter 7, where everybody thinks is the great multitude of everybody going rapture, well, they're right. <coughs> but this is no mystery. In Revelation chapter 7, verse 9, it tells you of the great multitude rapture. In Revelation 12, 5, it told you of the, the, the was caught up. <clears throat> it's all throughout. This is not a mystery. It's half the chapter is dedicated to it. The mystery is the pre-trib. The true pre-trib. This is the mid-trib great multitude rapture <clears throat> that will take place after the greatest revival in human history that will take place during the greatest time of tribulation during seals. Romans 16, you've got your workers being chosen, right? The Priscilla and Aquila. These are those who are in Christ, but they represent the remnant bride workers. They are, if you recall, the first fruits you see these are the first fruits workers these are the first fruits workers these are the 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 feasts of weeks anointing that these guys are going to receive as the first fruits workers unto christ look at what it says to the greetings at the end the doxology romans 16 25 remember there's a greeting of a group that's already gone, a mystery that's been made known to the nations because why? The vanishing that has happened. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Pretty clear, right? But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Now, people will read this and say, well, this was the death and resurrection of Christ, right? 
I could see how you might want to say that. But why don't you look a little closer? Made known to what? Made known to all nations. Was it made known to all nations at the resurrection of Christ? No. It was made known to a few thousand people. Would it eventually be made known to all the world, to all nations? Sure, but not for hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of years. What do you think is going to suddenly have a mystery that was kept secret to suddenly be made known to all nations? And, and this mystery that was kept secret that's going to be made to known to all nations is for the obedience of faith. Do you think this is talking about truly talking about Christ? Or do you think this sounds much more prophetic? That there is a much more prophetic tone to this, that this mystery that will suddenly be made known to all nations that was kept secret is going to be because of their obedience of faith. A group vanishing who is greeting in this, a, a group that has been made known, a, a mystery that was kept secret since the beginning of the world, being made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. <clears throat> and then look who's working. Remember this, if you go to 1 Corinthians 16, you see the end of seals. You have this representation of the saints being brought in and a group being chosen to work as the 144. And you find out. <laughs> it just dawned on me. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. Hello. Didn't we just say that? Wasn't it? that the group that comes in the rapture is the pentecost group that is brought in in the fall but will not be observed till the following year at passover ha ah, there it is right where it should be how about that look at what it says and who who are the this group that were chosen that it says by their letters they are the first fruits hello this is the first fruits they're going to help bring in the rapture group and they're going to be there during trumpets. It's the representation of the 144. Now listen who's giving them a greeting and a salutation. It's those from Romans 16 who were the workers during seals and the people they brought home. Listen to this. The, church of, the churches of Asia salute you, Priscilla and Aquila, salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. They are giving a greeting saying, you now take the reins. God bless you. They're now what? They're now gone to heaven. <clears throat> it's the end of seals. And of course, you know, when we get to 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 13, this is the third time I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> Told you. <clears throat> it's awesome. It's so awesome. But you see, I was bringing this up because of Romans that the real mystery is the pre-trib, not the great multitude rapture of the mid-trib. Doesn't it make sense to you when you understand these revelations in this ministry? Doesn't it make sense now that you understand them that the true mystery is the pre-trib of a smaller group, first fruits going to the Lord, of which a portion of them will be chosen to remain as what we call remnant bride. The whole world that studies prophecy already thinks pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib, but the, they think pre-trib is the great multitude rapture. You see why it's a mystery? <clears throat> a mystery that will be made known to all nations for the obedience of faith? Who is this group? They're the Genesis, what we call one oneers, one 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 twoers. Isn't it awesome? He's the Word, right? The Spirit. Then he's the light. Then the representation of the flesh. And we've got what in creation? 
the spirit the light the flesh what do we have luke mark matthew it's absolutely mind-boggling incredible now watch this now we're going to get into some nitty-gritty here in some of these things for you okay sip of coffee now that we understand it's only 50 and then seven and seven of years and that's cleared up we just showed that the 50 starts before the feast of weeks <clears throat> all right that was important to clear up to be able to biblically prove from revelation we already knew that it's 50 then seven and seven of years so there isn't this confusion oh it's the it's a 50 to the feast of weeks or 49 and then numbering 50 from taurus and then there's still another 50. no 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 in reverse it's 50 then seven and seven remember the revelation that the holy ghost confirmed in that video was the revelation of the end of days that we did in that video which is 50 days 14 years 50th jubilee 50 14 50 is the end time revelation code hello now we've proven it what was the key that we needed to remember i can't believe i totally had forgotten what was it it was that 50 days ends at the start of 14 years but that the start the end of 50 and the beginning of 14 is the feast of weeks from the very beginning of in the beginning in creation from the very beginning this was taurus it was taurus but guess what you say yeah okay we get that now alan it's taurus that's great but do you know it's even better than that do you know it's even better than just saying it was taurus okay you guys have seen me talk about this before to the early hebrews taurus was the first constellation in the zodiac and consequently it was represented by the first letter of their alphabet aleph okay we know how important this is for us right this is it right here aleph this is the this is their hebrew alphabet okay the ancient one see aleph bet gimel dalet hey vav okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ten twenty thirty forty fifty there's your noon 60 70 80 90 100 200 300 400. how many letters one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two their 22 letter hebrew alphabet begins with aleph begins with the head of the ox which is taurus what is the revelation of this ministry 22 years seven easy and only days before where it starts then seven years of seals seven years of trumpets and the 22nd year the final jubilee what is it from creation it is to man it would be 21,000 and the 22nd thousand eternity begins what is it to the lord god seven days seven days seven days and eternity begins at the new day what is it the representation of these first seven that began at taurus will end at taurus it will start at taurus it will end at taurus it will start at taurus it will end at taurus the lord god begins and ends at taurus but before taurus what is it they only felt like days it felt like days those seven years flew by like days 
the lord was excited during the creation of those first seven thousand years or seven days the end days typology is the revelation of the 50 days and it's represented by two short verses because there's not a whole description of it because he was so excited they flew by like days if the beginning was taurus and there are 22 letters to the alphabet and there are 21 22 years in the revelation of the end of days hello if it's 22 days to the lord god and 22,000 to man in time Do you think it's a mystery that their alphabet is 22 characters? Do you think it's a a mystery that it began in Aleph, in Taurus? Do you think it's a mystery that we found the revelation of Taurus that the Holy Spirit gave us as being right on target and it revealed to us the Aldubaran eye right on target of Taurus? The bull's eye? Do you think it's a mystery that it says it was Taurus, which is now two months off? The Lord God doesn't change, but prophetically it has been adjusted for and accounted for in Scripture. <laughs> Wait till you see. Wait till you see. It's so exciting. So here's the thing. When I've taught on this in the past, right, that this is what? 7,000 or seven days to the Lord, but in the end of days typology, it's seven years. But what is the entire storyline is they flew by like days, right? What is Luke's discourse? Luke's discourse isn't the whole seven years of the first seven easy. Luke's discourse in the only period when it all begins is the 50 days. So this is also a picture to us of the 50 days. They flew by like days, so we don't get a lot about it. When we go to Luke's discourse, what do we know about Luke's discourse? Well, watch this. (coughs) We know it says in verse 10, then he said unto them, speaking to Luke, uh, speaking to Mark and Matthews, as if he's saying, this is what's going to happen to them. It'll be nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, great signs, all these things. And then he says, but before all these, what does that mean? This is the beginning of that 50 days that comes first. How do we know? Because Luke's begins with nation, uh, sorry, Mark's begins with nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there's no, then he said unto them. There is no but first. When the tribulation begins, when the sword goes out of the red horse rider at Taurus, it will be nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, beginning with the attack on Jerusalem, surrounding and destroying them just at the time of the Feast of Weeks after the anointing of the Holy Ghost and they've gone out from Jerusalem, it will be an attack on Jerusalem and World War III will officially begin. And it is at the red horse rider. The white horse rider is the son of man coming for 40 days during those 50, as we already know, okay? So now watch this. We've taught on this many times. So a lot of this, you know, I gotta put some things in for new people and newer people who hadn't heard on these things. So we know that Luke's but before is this 50 days that comes first. What else is it? It's the it's the the Jacob felt like days. They were really 7 years but they felt like days cuz he was so in love. What else is it? It's um 2 Corinthians 12 I knew a man in Christ above Okay, it's also the above 14 years. 
and the 14 years begins at Taurus, which means the 50 days ends at Taurus and it's at the Feast of Weeks. This above, we have revealed here through many different areas that this above is represent, excuse me, is represented by 50 days. Okay. In the story of Jacob, we have the other terminology, which he says, they seemed unto him but a few days. So it was seven years, but it was a few days. It was above 14 years. And what is it? It's the revelation of 50 days. <clears throat> now watch this. We know Genesis 1 is what we've talked about. That in the beginning, God created, right? That this isn't only a representation of the 7,000 or seven days to the Lord. It's also a representation of the typology of the seven years end of days. But they flew by like days. It was only the above portion. So it's also a typology of that brief period of time, which is the days, which is represented by Luke's discourse before the seven days as years of Mark's group for seals and before the seven thousands as years of days for Matthew's group of trumpets. Now, here's why it was confused before. Here's why I had it on the other side. I had it as wherever true Feast of Weeks, right? I was saying it was there. We're sticking with the Hebrew calendar because we know it's only 50 days. So what I was saying was I believed that 70 was here or that 50 would begin at the Feast of Weeks. And when the 50 days ended, wherever that would be, that would be the beginning of the 14 years. But when we did that, mm, doesn't really equal, it doesn't equal anything. Right? So we, we extended the count, right? We extended the count of that sheaf of the wave offering and said, well, maybe really where it should be is right here by that additional week in relation to where true savant should be, right? Because, you know, if you counted the, the, if you didn't count the dark days, which is the way we did it, but there's nothing that says you don't count the dark days. It's in seven weeks. So we were saying, well, maybe it was really here, but if it was really at the end of unleavened bread, and then you start to number from the morrow after, well, that would bring us to the 15th of Savan. But even if you counted 50 days from the 15th of Savan, it puts you somewhere around here. <coughs> and that equals nothing. So it wasn't making sense. And so then I said, well, in the beginning, we know it was Taurus. And we now know that the Lord God is counting his beginning from the Feast of Weeks. <coughs> so then the thinking was, well, if in the beginning it was the Feast of Weeks, that, I mean, sorry, if in the beginning was Taurus, then that means Taurus at the beginning of creation wasn't actually Sivan, the third month. It was literally Nisan, the first month. Okay, because now the, the sun has gone off by so far. Okay, so then we said, okay, well, if that's the case, then this maybe is what the Lord is saying, that this is Passover and this is unleavened bread. This is resurrection. And we were saying, okay, if that's unleavened bread and we begin to count, right? We begin to count the, the seven Sabbaths, the way we were doing it. And then we get to the 50th day, we'd get to the ninth of Av. And we'd say, ah, the ninth of Av 
is a 50 days to the from the first attack of the ninth of Av to the second attack <coughs> in the beginning of Tishri. But I had an issue with it because that's already beginning the year. It's already the 71st year. And scripture told us they only observed the ninth of Av in the fifth month and the 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 fasting and mourning of the night of the fifth month and the fasting of mourning in the seventh month for 70 years. So they couldn't do it this year. It didn't make sense. It didn't matter how I was slicing it. <clears throat> and so what I what but what I had done is I believed that we knew Taurus was the beginning through the revelation, and I was adding 50 days from Taurus. It wasn't until the day of the of the live show or the night before the live show that I had the revelation that what was really going on is that it was 50 days before the 14 years at Taurus. Taurus was the beginning, right? We're looking for the 50 days to end in Taurus and for the 14 years to begin at Taurus. And it becomes very, very clear <coughs> just by looking at the alphabet. If Taurus was at the very beginning, which it was, in the beginning was Taurus, well, then what do you think the beginning is? It's not the beginning of the 50 days. It's the beginning of where the beginning of the first seven began was in Taurus, which means when the first seven are done and the next seven begin, it starts at Taurus. When the next seven are done and the next seven begins, it's at Taurus. His beginnings are always in Taurus. And so what I had done is believed and this is what i told my wife when i was explaining it to her <clears throat> was we knew that this was a typology of seven thousand starting and seven thousand ending or in the typology of end times it was the first seven years of luke beginning and the end of the seven years of luke ending but this also was a typology of flew flew by so quickly right it seemed as days we knew it was also a typology of the above 14 years. And so in reading in the beginning <coughs> and knowing it was the, the Luke portion, what do we know this word means? <coughs> Excuse me. We know that this word means first fruits. <coughs> but what I took it as beginning was what? was still Taurus. Okay, we're going to stick with the Hebrew calendar. <clears throat> so if in the beginning was where they have Feast of Weeks in Taurus, what does that mean? That means at the beginning of creation, at the word in the beginning, do you know what it was? Feast of Weeks. Get ready. Get ready. We're going to keep building it. What do we know this word 7225 means? We know that it means Christ. It means Jesus. It means the feast of first fruits, the one without leaven, who is the first fruits 7225. <clears throat> it is Christ. Christ is the beginning. Remember how we've always said, in Christ, God created because the beginning means first fruits Christ. So what I did is I thought, because we know it's the seven years, but because we also know it's the representation of the above in the felt like days, that then this must be, sticking with the Hebrew calendar, this must be the beginning of the 50 days. Okay, and so I was putting it on the other side, which is why I used that that uh, image for the last live show. 
I put the 50 days on this side instead of this side. I was too late and I should have been earlier. Let me show you something. Let me show you this with um with now Mark. Okay? We know in um in Luke's discourse, okay? We know that Luke's discourse when he says okay? Then he said unto them, nation against nation. That's the end of 50 days, and it's the beginning of Luke's discourse, okay? But it says, but before all this, okay? But before all these. We know this is the beginning of the 50 days. But let me ask you something. Is is the Luke group gone? Yes. The Luke group is gone on day one, those born out of due time, right? Those born premature, before the travailing. They're gone. This group that's going to be here experiencing, but before all this, they shall lay their hands on you. These are the remnant workers. These are the remnant bride workers. These are the Priscilla's and Aquila types. Okay? The first fruits workers. Well, guess what? The Luke group of the pre trib is gone. Who's left? The Mark group. And the Matthew group, the the world, house of Israel, Gentiles, grafted in, sleeping church, and the house of Judah, the Jews. So guess what happens when you go to Mark chapter 1? The church, uh, the pre-trib bride is gone. So who else is going to experience this period of time from in the beginning? Mark's group. Mark's group is going to obviously be here. Everybody who doesn't go pre-trib and the mystery made known to all nations because of the obedience of their faith is left, which includes Mark and Matthew. So the Mark's group, listen to how Mark starts. The beginning. (laughs) What beginning is it? It's the same beginning as John in chapter 1. When it says, in the beginning was the word. You see, it's the same one. It's the same one. So what is this beginning? What is this beginning? And why is this beginning in Mark chapter 1? Because Mark is the sleeping church, the world, house of Israel, Gentiles grafted in, right? They're going to be here from the beginning. You see? From the beginning, they're going to be here. That's why it doesn't start until, see, the 40 days. You see, Christ shows up, it's a stoop down, it's the typology of his 40 days, and then he begins his ministry, chooses disciples. The Luke group, Luke doesn't have this. Only Mark does. Because they're going to be here. Even in the beginning. And what is John's beginning telling us, right? What is John's beginning telling us when it's saying it's the same as as Mark 1 in the typology of of the 50 days beginning, the bride being gone? When is it going to happen? From the beginning. But guess what? This beginning, just as John 1's beginning, which is the beginning reference to Genesis 1 in the Hebrew beginning, what is this beginning? What is this beginning? Of course, it's Taurus, right? Taurus starts the first 7,000. Taurus starts the second 7,000. Taurus starts the third 7,000. Taurus is the beginning of every single year to the Lord God. But look what it's called. Feast of first fruits, first fruits. This is Christ who is the feast of first fruits. This is the definition of the feast of first fruits. Do you know why it's the definition of the feast of first fruits? Because in the beginning, which began 
in Taurus, which began in Taurus. Just wait, let me see. We'll make sure I'm where I'm at. <clears throat> which began in Taurus, what we now call the Feast of Weeks. Do you know what it was? Feast of First Fruits. In the beginning, this was the Feast of First Fruits, brothers and sisters. Do you get it? In the beginning, at the start of it all, it was Taurus. And the Lord God never changed his celestial clock. In the beginning is Taurus. But guess what? Is the beginning called weeks? Is the beginning called? Watch this, watch this, watch this. Is the beginning called the Feast of Weeks, First Fruits, 1061? Or is the beginning called First Fruits, 7225? It's first fruits of the feast of first fruits, 7225. Which means in the beginning in Taurus, it began at first fruits of the feast of first fruits. This is where creation began. This is where creation began. So here's the thing. If this is where creation began and it represents each 7,000 years, then you might say, well, then isn't this the beginning of 7,000 years or the beginning of the seven and seven of seals and trumpets? Yes, it is. But let me ask you something. Is this where the Feast of First Fruits is? Is this where the Feast of First Fruits is? Hello. In the beginning of creation, the beginning of creation was the Feast of First Fruits. In the beginning of creation, it all began at the Feast of of first fruits and that beginning was even called first fruits jesus the only one who is that beginning he is called the first of the first fruits how about that and it was in taurus where is first fruits now? Fifty days earlier. What did the Lord God tell Daniel prophetically where he begins his years? Ends and starts his years at the Feast of Weeks. Why? Because he already knew prophetically that the sun was going to go off course. He is already accounted, brothers and sisters, for the sun going off course 50 days before the beginning of the 14 years when at the beginning of creation, the beginning, which we now call Feast of Weeks, was the Feast of First Fruits. It was the first of the first fruits. And this is called what? This is the Feast of First Fruits. Christ is called the first of the first fruits. This is the second first fruits. In creation, in the beginning, 
first fruits of the feast of first fruits was in Taurus at the beginning. But he gave us and confirmed to us a prophetic revelation, which we have revealed in a dozen places plus in scripture, that 50 days would come first and guess where it would be? At the feast of first fruits, because this is a beginning and this is a beginning. This is the Lord God. This is the Son. Hello, watch this. What does Mark what does Mark 1 start off with again? The beginning. Which beginning is it? It's the beginning, the commencement, the chief. It's the feast of first fruits, not the feast of weeks. Remember, this is all about the Son of Man. This represents the 40, 50 days. He's with him. He's there. He makes his way to him. He's, he's got the 40 days in the wilderness. He chooses his disciples. It's all about the 40 to 50 day typology that starts with the beginning. But the beginning in creation was first fruits. This beginning is first fruits. And yet, this beginning is what? All about the 40, 50 day period of the Son of Man being here. And there's his 40 days being tempted and choosing his disciples. It's literally Mark's gospel beginning right here in a 50-day count of which the Son of Man returns on the eighth day. He's going to be here for 40 days. He's going to leave just like the typology of tempted by Satan in the wilderness. He leaves. He's anointed. He's chosen his disciples. And when he leaves, Jerusalem will be compassed about. They will receive the anointing on the 50th day and Jerusalem will be destroyed. Did you get it? Did you catch that? This beginning is literally this beginning. This beginning is the Feast of First Fruits. This beginning was also the Feast of First Fruits at the entirety of the beginning of creation, which was in Taurus. And in the entirety of the beginning of creation in Taurus, it all started at first fruits because Taurus was month one. But because the sun has moved, by two months approximately because the sun has moved over thousands of years the actual first fruits is now precisely 50 days earlier than it was at creation This is not only the beginning of the first 7,000 or seven years typology and the end of the first seven years in typology. It is also the typology of the above 14 years. It is the typology of the seven that felt like days because he was so in love and excited to get his bride. And within the revelation of it, the beginning was Taurus and the beginning was the feast 
of first fruits the end the beginning will be where is it the end will be hold on hold on hold on hold on hold your horses come on now the end oh shoot i thought i had it come on come on come on come on will be the beginning oh 746 the commencement the chiefest the beginning within this one blip of word we have the creation that started in taurus when it started in taurus taurus was nissan or month one and when creation began it began at first fruits which now is the third month at the feast of weeks and the beginning which is christ the feast of first fruits <laughs> is precisely 50 days earlier guys are you following what i'm laying down we have such an incredible revelation in two mysteries since the creation of the world being revealed right here right now on top of all the rest that this beginning was taurus and the feast of first fruits it is a picture of the first seven thousand years seven days to the lord it is a picture in the typology of the first seven easy years of luke or like jacob flew by they were years that flew by like days and it is also a picture of having flown by so quick it's like just looking at it as the days of the 50. it is both the beginning taurus the beginning taurus the beginning taurus and it is at the same time the 50 days before the beginning in taurus it is the beginning of the first fruits of the week uh, of the feast of weeks brothers and sisters at the death and in particular the resurrection of christ at first fruits what was it an end heck no the resurrection of jesus christ at first fruits was what a beginning it was the beginning it was a new beginning what was it here in the beginning prophetically it's the new beginning it's the prophetic typology of him at the start of the 50 days it's the new beginning it's all about the 50 days that it represented we have covered these things guys you remember we covered these which was the whole reason i thought that in the beginning which meant taurus which meant taurus was <laughs> the feast of first fruits which means we should probably count 50 days on this side but that was because in the beginning which represented seven thousand or the seven years of end of days was also representing the the end of the of the seven and probably the the taurus in the 50. no it was representing taurus and it was representing first fruits the father never changes he is represented by taurus and where's first fruits now 50 days earlier which is what it was also representing by saying in the beginning flying by like days or above 14 years this is the mystery are you kidding me this is the mystery <clears throat> do you know when christ came the first time in like 2000 years ago do you know that the sun at that time was in Ayar, right? Everybody knows this, right? It was in uh, Aries, right? It was in Aries. 
everybody's aware that it was in Aries at the time of Christ because the sun at that time, 2,000 years ago, was only a month off. So when do you think Christ was crucified? Passover. In the month of now, our month of Iyar. Crucifixion, right? The time of uh, being buried and his resurrection. The time of the end. So he was what? He was the first of the first fruits. So what do you think the other first fruits are going to be? It literally tells us it in scripture. He is the first of the first fruits. And the, the word first is the Hebrew word 7225. And then the other first fruits, because he is the first of the first fruits. So the word first is the Hebrew word 7225, which means chief and commencement. And the word first fruits that follows it is the 1061 Hebrew word, which is the one for the Feast of Weeks. Hello. Because why? This 20, almost 20,000 years ago was this. He is the first of the first fruits, which is what? Which was represented now as the Feast of Weeks. And he is what? The first of the first fruits. He is the feast of first fruits which is the first fruits of the feast of weeks which he also was which is why they're going 50 days earlier at the feast of weeks because they're connected do you understand the picture that we're drawing here of christ on the cross that we shared in the live show we've talked about recently do you get it what is this this is deuteronomy 16. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 16 is the seven days of Passover, like the seven years of Mark, the bread of affliction. Okay, remember they're coming in during Passover unleavened bread. It's the seven years, days as seals of years. Then you have what? The Feast of Weeks, which is a one day event. So you have seven day event, you have a one day event, and then you've got the Feast of Booths, which is the seven years of trumpets to Judah. And then after the seven, what do you have? You have an eighth day. Then you have the eighth day. What is the story of the end of days? It's the Feast of Weeks. In the beginning, the Feast of Weeks was first fruits of the Feast of First Fruits. And now it's the Feast of Weeks. You have a one day event. And then you've got seven years of seals, like the Passover bread of affliction, of affliction, seven days. And then you've got the seven days of tabernacles, which is the seven years of trumpets. And then you have what? Then you have the eighth day of tabernacles, which is the eighth year from trumpets or the 15th year in the bigger picture. And it's what? The new beginning. What came first? The beginning. What started? <clears throat> Feast of Weeks. 717 will be seven. Uh, sorry, sorry, will be one, seven, seven. 717 is one, seven, seven. He was on the cross. Isn't that amazing that he's on the cross in the middle position? What did he say to the guy on his right? He repented. And in Luke, what did he say in Luke? Oops. What did he say in Luke? Where is it? What did he say in Luke 23? Right? In Luke 23, the guy repented. And what did he say to him? Where is it? Where is it? He said in verse 43, Luke 23, verse 43, And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. He told the guy on his right, 
that he would be on paradise, in paradise with him. This guy was a last minute, obviously come in, right? No chance of, of, of baptism and all that, right? He comes in and he's told he would go to paradise. Christ was on the cross. Guys, you got to follow this. Christ was on the cross at Passover and resurrected on, of course, the Feast of First Fruits. Okay? But in the beginning, he was what? He was the he was in the beginning, he was in Taurus as what? The feast of first fruits. Today, the feast of first fruits, resurrection day, is represented as what? The middle one, the feast of weeks. The moon, the sun has gone off. It was represented as the Feast of Weeks. So Christ being in the middle position, you would think, well, he's representing one in Deuteronomy, the Feast of the Lord. This guy's going to paradise. And who goes to paradise? The rapture group who endures seven years of seals like seven years of the afflicted bread of the seven days of Passover. This is the representation of the flesh. Okay, the representation of the flesh, the one on the right, which is like the tabernacles, seven years of Judah, and then it would be new beginning, which means he's representing what? The Feast of Weeks in the one day event at the Feast of Weeks. Why? Because in creation, that's where it equaled, where now it's the middle feast. And guess what? It still goes first. This is why I was saying this is a revelation that we've known now for over a year. That Deuteronomy is seven days, one day, seven days. But he's in the first position. He's in the second for paradise and he's in third. <clears throat> Remember that? We've got the videos for it, right? It's like podium positions. First place, second place, third place. Feast of weeks, seven days of Passover, seven days of trumpets. One seven seven but to look at it is seven one seven it just so happens that the father's name in hebrew goes from right to left and it's what yod hey vav hey what does it look like seven comma one seven do you think that's just by chance or do you think that's by design Brothers and sisters, this is absolutely over the top, mind blowing revelation of the end of days being confirmed right here, right now. The bride of Christ, because what? Do you know the only time this can happen? Is if this is the end of 70 years as the lord god commanded 70 years what have we revealed here in this ministry before this revelation we had been tracking the 70 years for five years and we've revealed it 1948 they came into the land they didn't plant trees until 1949 right? February 49, when they formed a government. The government never took over until March and officially became the official government in March of 1949. One year later, at the New Year of Trees, that completed one year to the New Year of Trees, and it was still in their first year from when they had a government, which means it didn't start till 1949. So from 1949, to 1950 was year one complete 50 to 51 was year two complete 51 to 52 was year three complete 52 to 53 was four years complete when we understand this and as you guys know in leviticus 19 
three years you can't take from it in the fourth year it is to the lord and in the fifth year it is yours the fifth year forward was theirs so from 1953 to 1954 was year one where it was all theirs well guess what 1953 starting from 1953 to 2023 is 70 years we showed going from the other angle for the fig tree generation that the lord here with the fig tree said three years i've come and it's producing no fruit the vine dresser says give it one more year and if not cut it down when does it get cut down at the end of four years so this is showing it on another angle where they were in the land for 70 years the lord god gave them four more years three more to see and if not in the fourth year they would cut it down that equals 2023 for four and 70 or 70 and four there is no way around 2023 being the end of the true 70 years to israel as the lord god had them counting where the lord god was counting from had always been the mystery and we freaking knew it back in march of 2020 but when dates come and go along the way and we're diligently seeking other things and connections along the way it got away from us it got away from me because we were looking at another period in time and then we come to taurus and we consider it again and two more years had passed and look at what the lord gives us now you see that is when they came into the land yes it begins in nissan that is month one because of the sun but the lord god has never changed his taurus beginning isn't it incredible that the lord god built into the revelation that we received the code of 50 days 14 years and the 50th jubilee the code of 50 days that came first was revealed in in the beginning it revealed to us that he was not only going to start the 14 years in taurus that every start of every year to the lord god from the beginning of genesis 1 1 to the end of revelation 22 the lord god starts and stops his years every single year in year out from the beginning of creation to the end in taurus and he accounted for the sun going off by revealing to us that there was 50 days as the above 14 years so that we could bring the revelation of the first fruits which was together at the beginning with taurus 50 days earlier because of the sun's movement this is absolutely over the bananas (laughs) i don't even have a term for it You've just witnessed the revelation. The revelation of the beginning of the end. We have shown the 70th proven. We have shown the revelation of the Gospels. We have shown that Luke's discourse is that 40, 50 day period that comes first. We've shown that the end of days is 14 years, two sets of seven of seals and trumpets. We were given one physical thing in understanding from the Holy Ghost that confirmed a video that had the revelation of 50 days first, then 14 years, then the 50th Jubilee, which was connected to noon, which is the 14th letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which means 50, which we were told was right on target which was the revelation of the eye of Taurus and the head of Taurus, 
and the head of Taurus is called Aleph, and it is represented by two eyes. One is 70 and one is 50. And the one that's 50 means 14 as the 14th brightest star, which is represented by noon and the number 50 as the 14th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And in the beginning of creation, at the beginning of 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, of the 22 letters or the 22,000 years of creation, of the 22 years of the end of days, It started in Taurus for the first seven. It started in Taurus for every single year since. Taurus is the revelation of the beginning to the Lord God. And in the beginning, it was the feast of first fruits. He accounted for those 50 days going off by giving us the above, which would account to where feast of first fruits was and where it would be to allow for his Gentile bride to be removed and his first fruits remnant worker bride to be anointed and set out to go work from Jerusalem at the beginning of the 14 years. Brothers and sisters, I am telling you, I am coming out of my skin. It freaked me out this was the revelation that hit me it came into my thoughts yet again in the shower it just dropped into my spirit and i said oh my goodness wait a second in the beginning which we know is taurus i thought meant the beginning was also taurus so if the beginning was in the beginning and it was Taurus, then then that means that's where the, the 50 start in Taurus. And then, but none of the count made sense. And what was dropped. So those were some of my thoughts. You know, I'm trying to contemplate these knowing that the 50 comes first. And which was the revelation in the, in the live show. And that night in the shower, boom, it drops in my spirit. As we knew, this was the beginning of Taurus and the end of Taurus in a 7,000 years, we also know that this is the beginning of 50 days in the typology. And at the end of the 50 days is Taurus. And this is the beginning of the seven years of seals. And I said, wait a second, hold the horses. I just received the revelation that the beginning is the Feast of Weeks, but that this beginning is Yeshua. This beginning is the Son of Man. This is the 50 days type before the 14 years begin in Taurus. And when this first seven began, I'm reiterating, when this first seven began, it was Taurus. When this one ends and this seven begins, it will be Taurus. When this one ends and this one begins, it will be Taurus. But the beginning of the Feast of First Fruits, which was the beginning, is now precisely 50 days before. Are you kidding me? Are you guys ready for this? Let me show you this. Let me help you guys to see it. Okay? Now that we've covered it, now let me give you, help you with a a visual. Okay? From the beginning of creation was Taurus. So just like the seven thousands and the seven days to the Lord, they were all from Taurus. What is it in the end of days? Every year it's Taurus. So the first easy seven, the right? Every one, every year starts in Taurus for the Lord, for the Father. But the Lord is first fruits, the feast of first fruits. So that's where it's always got to be. So watch this. Day one of creation, okay, is in the beginning, 7225, okay? The Spirit of God, Luke's group, okay? The typology of the end of days, Luke group, it's the spirit group. It's the portion called the gap theory creation, verse one and two, okay? It's the Jacob type, seven years as seven days or seven years as 7,000. And they seemed unto Jacob, right? But a few days for the love that he has for. And we get this 
picture of it being just a brief amount of time by two verses it represents 7000 in the time of creation and in, in looking at it through time but it also represents his few days okay so we know that to us it would have been like a thousand years so okay so you have day one there's the end of a thousand years the two thousand years three thousand years four thousand five thousand six thousand seven thousand years comes to an end in the revelation of genesis 1 verse 1 and 2 being a picture of luke seven years for the end of days okay seven years started and ends year two three four five six this is the end of seven years so what is this a picture of okay it's a picture of this okay those first seven okay this is all the mystery of the gap theory creation to the lord god they were as days to us looking at it it would have been as thousands but the mystery was hidden in the story of jacob and the revelation of the end of days so those seven thousand that began in taurus and that will end those first seven thousand in taurus the seven day the seven years of the end of days that began in taurus and will end in taurus we know they have a 50 days before right the before it ends represents the above 14 years of second corinthians 12 2 right i knew a man in christ above 14 years ago it's also luke's discourse which is the first seal of the white horse rider and a total of 50 days. Okay, there it is right there. 50 days that come before the seventh year ends. And the typology in the gap theory creation is that it's 7,000 years. And we know that's what it represents. But in its short span of verses, we know it also has a typology of being the above 14 years and they seemed but a few days and that revelation is the revelation that it was in the beginning which is the feast of first fruits we covered this second peter 3 8 <clears throat> when the seven thousand first year gap theory comes to an end and the 50 days come to an end when the seven years end at the end of the 50 days of luke's discourse what's going to happen it's going to begin day one of the eighth year or the second set of seven years which is the start of tribulation mark 13's discourse when it starts it starts at the red horse rider and it's going to begin with nation against nation kingdom against kingdom there it is right there what was it in the creation story day eight was really what the second seven thousand years that started what are we told they are we were told they were days day one two three four five six seven but we were told from first peter 3 8 that to us they would be like thousands but to the lord because he was there in them was like a day each so what do you have the eighth day starts, which is really, you know, it's called day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And to us, they would be as thousands. There's the end of the each one. When the 14,000 ends, or what the what uh, Genesis chapter two, uh, verse one and two said, is the seventh day ended. It was the seventh day of the creation of days, but we know the mystery of the gap theory was also the first seven. You following? What is it equal on this side? Mark's group, right? <clears throat> the seal's beginning. The se starting from the second seal, which begins at what? Taurus. What did each of these begin at? Taurus. When the 50 days are over, the first seven are over, the 50 days come to an end. When 50 ends, the 14 years begins, and it's Taurus. And it's the red horse rider. The sword is given. It'll be what? 
seven years of seals, which goes from the eighth year to the 14th year. You see? There's the big picture that we're talking about. But we talk about always oh, 14 years like this. Why? Because these are the mystery and nothing really took place in them. The only piece that matters is really the 50. And when the 50 is over, the 14 begin. But in the big picture, they're what? The eighth year through the 14th year. So what are we looking at? The eighth year through the 14th year. It's the same as the 8,000th through the 14,000th or the day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven from Genesis 1 to Genesis 2. When they're over, seals come to an end. It's the rapture of the great multitude. It's the end of the light. And it just so happens what? That was when Christ became light. Who is he coming to save? He's coming to shed light in the darkness to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which is Mark. When the seals are over, what's left? Starts at day 15 to the Lord God, <clears throat> right? And what is it, day 15 to the Lord God? Look at that. It's our end days, big picture, 15 years, which in the 14 years of tribulation is the eighth year. So what is it? In the big picture, it's really the 15,000th year. What was the beginning of the 15th day to the Lord God or the 15,000th year to us who would be looking at it as time? It was the beginning of flesh. This is when Adam was created. Remember, now at Adam, it was now living in the thousands of years in the dimension of time, which to the Lord God were as a day. What is it? Didn't John say, and then became flesh? The flesh portion is the third portion. And who is flesh? Judah. We are living in Judah's time, as I said in the beginning. We're living in Judah's time. That's why we're to pray for the Jews. Hello. And when, what happens? When the tribulation is over, and the seven years of trumpets come to an end the lord will return at the end of the seven at uh, the end of the sixth year of trumpets which in the big picture is the end of 20 but in the smaller picture it's the end of 13. and then what does he do he renews the covenant and destroys the enemy binds satan for a thousand years and restoration takes place and then what? When that seventh year is over, the Jubilee begins. What happens? The Jubilee begins. What is it in this big story of creation? Now we're in the thousands of years, right? There's the thousand from the creation of Adam, the first thousand, second, third, fourth. What happened at the end of the fourth? Christ showed up. Christ showed up and then it was death and resurrection. 19, 20. What happens at the end of the 20,000? What happens at the end of the 20,000? Hello. At the end of 20,000 is going to be the end of the 6,000 since Adam. And then what? It's the millennial reign. The 21,000. What is it to us? The 7,000th year millennial reign in the flesh for who for matthew the jews and when it's all over in the big picture when the twenty-one thousand or the millennial reign is over what is it the beginning of eternity revelation 22 to the lord god the whole thing was 22 days in the big picture of time it will be twenty-two thousand years in the end of days it was seven years, seven years, seven years. And when it's all over, it's the 22nd year. It's the Jubilee, the new beginning. And what is it? Leviticus chapter 25. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 25. Just as it said, after the seven Sabbaths of years, 
of which the tribulation, the easy seven of Luke, is the third last seven year. The seven years of seals is the second last seven. And the seven years of trumpets is the final of the seven times seven. And then it will be a jubilee year of proclaiming liberty to the entirety of human civilization forever. In the millennial reign will begin. And all those who were in the wilderness till the end of the seventh trumpet, till the end of that three and a half years when they flew on the wings of eagles, will come back. And it will be their jubilee year. They will be restored their lands, each tribe to their division with heads over them. And the 12 tribes, which was... Which was exactly what 1 Corinthians 15 told us. Which was how it started from Matthew, Mark, John to Luke. And in the end went Luke to John to Mark and Matthew. Will be the 12 tribes that will head just as Matthew 28 said. When they now go out and teach teaching to observe all things that the Lord will have commanded them, and he is now with them until the end of the world. These are the 12 tribes who represent the 12 gates through which everybody will enter to come and worship the Lord during the millennial reign. Brothers and sisters, this is the revealed end of days from the creation to the finish from the creation to the 50, to the beginning of the end of days, it is the 50, 14, and the final jubilee of years. Brothers and sisters, I pray this blesses you. My throat is absolutely wrecked. <laughs> I was trying to remain as calm and as not too fired up as I could. But I am telling you, this is the revelation. I pray you take the time to study it, to seek it. Take your time in it. Be patient in it. Follow it and understand it. And if you're new, go to the playlist. At least do yourself a favor and just watch those first three in the playlist. And this will begin to make much more sense. Brothers and sisters, the ministry that has been given the revelation of the open books has been given the revelation of the beginning of the end of days. I pray it blesses you. I'm not going to go on anymore. My throat is torn. I love you guys. God bless you. This was definitely the video to tear my voice in because this is awesome. The Spirit is leading in the Word. Of that, there is no doubt. Time is up, brothers and sisters. Get ready. Keep watching. Keep praying. Be repentant. Seek them in all things. Be strong. You can come and join us at our website in the forum. We have people that do discords. We have people that Zoom meet. We have people that meet up with each other all around the world to encourage, to strengthen, to share, to pray for to support brothers and sisters we have just a few weeks left i hope and pray you continue to watch i hope and pray you continue to repent lift each other up because we're here i love you god bless you god bless your families we'll talk to you soon bye for now